one of the things that, uh, one of the messages or studies that I wanted to do in 2008, last year, was on uh, finances. I wanted to talk, teach here on during the Sunday morning services on finances. And I put it down, we usually listed all the topics we want to cover over the course of the months to come. But somehow last year we could really could not get to it. We had a lot of other things coming up. We started talking about revival. We started talking about the presence of God. And, and so this kind of kept get put, pushed down the list. Until when I was planning for 2000, I said, okay, the first thing we're going to do in 2009 is start talking on finances. Amen? Now, don't worry. We're not going to take up an offering. <laughs> but we're going to address this whole issue, or not the whole issue, the whole subject of finances, of success, of prosperity of wealth and riches, and talk about that in the house of God. Now, you know, the moment you introduce a subject like this, all of a sudden we get our spiritual masks out, and we look so spiritual, oh no, I have nothing to do with money, you know, I have nothing to do with wealth and riches, and don't talk about it, it's, it's far away from me. And, and we kind of, but secretly we pray, God bless me, God please give me a job, increase in my, increase my salary, God please promote. We pray that, but you know, we kind of, Theoretically, we distance ourselves from anything to do with prosperity and money and on, on, on and on. But I want us to come out of the closet, so to speak, and just be honest and accept and understand what the Word of God says on this subject and, uh, and believe the Word of God and pursue what God has destined or in store for us as an inheritance for His people. Amen? So we, I'm calling this uh, series uh, 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 Financial Freedom. And it's kind of interesting just given the things that are happening around the world, I think for several months now, almost every day you're reading in the, news, you're reading in the newspapers of um, you know, just, just the turmoil that's going around the, world, around the world, almost every nation being hit economically and uh, large organizations laying off tens of thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of people. And uh, the, the whole um, turbulence financially around the world. And, uh, and this week, right in our own nation, with the Satyam Fiesco, uh, all that's happening. And I think it's so appropriate for us as God's people at this juncture to get to the Word of God and say, what does God say concerning money, concerning success, concerning prosperity, concerning wealth and riches? And let's pursue what the Word of God says. Amen? So, that's what we are going to do. Now, I want to kind of, before we get into this uh, teaching this morning, I want to just uh, take a few moments to give a rather lengthy introduction, kind of just talk about the background and so on and so forth, just to clear the air, because uh, many times when you start talking on a subject like this, uh, people are ready to take out their guns and shoot the pastor, you know. They're ready. But I want to just give you some background, just to clear the air so that there's no misunderstanding before we get into the Word of God this morning. First of all, just as a way of background, I want us, to, I want us as a congregation to understand that I started preaching and teaching on success, on prosperity, wealth, and riches as a teenager. Okay? As a, you know, I must have been 15 or 16 when I started teaching these things in a little Bible study that I was doing at the Methodist Church right here in our city. I was teaching these things. Then I continued that through college and over the years. And, and uh, uh, even at All People's Church. Uh, the last time we did a series on this was, I think it was 2002, 2003. Those of you who were with us at the Christian Workers Center, you would remember the, uh, a series on this. So... I'm saying this not just to impress on you the fact that, uh, you know, it's not like last week I read a book and then this week we're doing the series. Or I heard a message on TV on prosperity and so we're going to talk about it. No, 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 no. This has been something that, um, that I've learned as a teenager and tried to live by to the best of my ability. I know I'm not where I want to be, but I know I have a history to this and I have a future in this. Amen. So it's not just a passing thing we're doing. It. I've tried to live by some of these things that we've, uh, we're going to discover together. And, uh, and uh, you know, even running a business has been like a laboratory for me to, to try to apply these things in it. And I know I'm not where I want to be, but I know the Word of God will work. Amen? So keep that as a, as a background. Secondly, the moment we start talking about prosperity, wealth, riches, success, money, finances... Most Christians, or most of the church world, is very apprehensive about it. Oh, no, no, don't talk about it. Because of the immediate connotation with what is known as the prosperity message. Right? So what has happened now, 
people are distancing themselves away from the truth of God, God's word concerning success and prosperity, wealth and riches, because of the negative connotations associated with the prosperity message. Now the truth is that, especially in, our West, in the Western world, from the time this whole teaching on, on, on God's purpose to bless His people came out, there has been a lot of abuse. And it's true, we're not negating that. There have been ministers and ministries who have literally abused this. You know, have, they have uh, uh, extravagant lifestyles, building multi-million ho dollar homes, having lavish uh, uh, expenditures, cars and all of that, all using the tithes, the offerings that people gave. And so obviously there has been so much of negative uh, connotation, negative uh, uh, thought on the whole prosperity message that people tend to distance away from the truth. Now, the, the, what I want to challenge you is this. Don't throw the baby away with the bathwater. Amen? Now, this happens to every truth in the Word of God. When we talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, spraying in tongues. Now, a couple of years ago, we had somebody come from the United States and uh, he, uh, this was, I think, 2003 or something. I don't remember the exact year. And this was a person, you know, he, he had studied, he's a PhD, a scientist, has all these degrees from uh, Ivy League schools, and he came, and so we had him come and speak to our employees, and some of our pastors were also there at that time, uh, to speak to people in our office. And, you know, I thought, okay, you know, he's going to bring a, a message that can really relate to the people. He's, you know, has a PhD, he's graduated from all these top universities, a scientist, etc., etc. But he came and he, was, he spent about 45 minutes talking and like we really couldn't figure out what he was talking. Then he said, I want to pray for all of you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Lined everybody up and he started slapping people on the faces. Say, speak in tongues, you know. Pushing people on the chair. Now, I was so embarrassed. I said, you know, this is not the way you do it, you know. But what can you do? The truth is, God still pours out His Spirit and people pray in tongues. But the expression of it, the, the, the way that this person was doing it, really turned people off because you're slapping people on the faces. At least you'd have said, ouch, you know. And he'd said, you got it, you know. <laughs> so, and then, so when he left, I sent him an email, you know, as much as I respect all his qualifications, I sent him an email, I said, you know, these are some things you do not do. You do not push people on the chairs. You don't slap people on the faces. You don't kick them on the foot. I mean, these are things you don't do when you're ministering to people. And as much as I respect him, I had to send that email out and, you know, so uh, there has been always uh, the truth many times, be, either it's exaggerated, miscommunicated, or misrepresented, uh, but that does not deny the truth. Amen. Now you may know of people who died believing God to heal them. They refused to take medications, refused to do uh, They said, God's my healer. They died. Did God stop being the healer? No, He's still the healer. I cannot allow a certain one's experience to deny the truth. The truth is, God is still Jehovah Rapha. Amen. So the same thing with this whole teaching on finances and what the Word of God says. Concerning. Let's not, you know, because people have misinformed, miscommunicated in the West, what happened as a result of the prosperity message is that people incorrectly associated spirituality, they measured your faith in God by how wealthy you were. And that's an incorrect uh, truth or incorrect way to express the truth right you cannot measure somebody's faith in God and de devil of spirituality with how prosperous they are no so all of this has caused a lot of misunderstanding and apprehension in the church but we have to receive the truth third thing a couple of years ago somebody asked me they said you know you know you, you, you talk about God prospering us and causing us to be successful will this work for anyone I mean it probably will work for the West it'll probably will work for an urban crowd but what about the beggar on the street what about the poor man in the village will this work for anyone the truth is God's word will work for anyone who believes it amen it doesn't matter if it's a beggar on the street. It doesn't matter if it's a poor villager. God's word will work with any, for anyone in any part of the world. This is not a Western gospel. It's the word of God. Now, how it is expressed may be different in different lives. For a college student, success and prosperity may be expressed in a different way. For a farmer in a village, success and prosperity expresses in a different way. For a businessman for a corporate professional success and prosperity is expressed in a different way 